if, you, if I may, I'll start at the beginning of how we, you know, I came to be, I guess, what I would call myself these days, which is an entrepreneur. I'm, I'm from Huddersfield in, in Yorkshire, back in, um, in the UK, and the first moment I decided to be an entrepreneur was when I was a 16-year-old kid, and I had a job working in the dog biscuit factory in Huddersfield, and it was a pretty crummy job. It paid two pounds an hour. And the task that was assigned to me was I had to get down on my hands and knees and pick up the dog biscuits off the factory floor that had fallen off the conveyor belt. And I'm down on my hands and knees picking up dog biscuits for two pounds an hour. And I think to myself, there's got to be a better way of making money than this. And, but I'm quite a hard working guy. And there was still part of me that wanted to do as good a job as possible. So I went up to the foreman and said, look, I'm the guy that's picking up the dog biscuits. Have you got a brush I could borrow? And he looked me dead in the eyes and said, son, you are the brush. And <laughs> I swear that was the moment that just something flipped inside me. I thought, no, I can't, I can't be that. I can't be a brush. This is probably the most often told story about Innocent, but I have to say it really was the absolute uh, turning point. It was the catalyst that got us in, into business. We, made five inch, we bought 500 pounds worth of fruit and turned it into our favorite smoothie recipe in our kitchen and then took it along to a music festival and set up a little stall at this music festival. And to get a sense of whether people liked it or not, we put up a, a sign above the stall that said, should we give up our jobs to make these smoothies? And I put a bin in front of the stall that said yes, and put another one that said no, and asked people to buy the smoothies, drink them, and then vote with the empty bottles. And we made a commitment to each other as a group of three friends that if that yes bin was full by the Sunday night, then we'd go on the Monday and resign. And we got to that Sunday night, and the yes bin was full. There was a few in the no bins, which about five years ago, and it was only about five years ago, our parents confessed to having put into, because they were, they were worried about us giving up our jobs at the time. That's another thing that I fundamentally believe. The most important thing, I think, in, in life generally, certainly in business, is just get started. If you knew in advance what it was going to take, you probably wouldn't. But if you get started, then there's a sort of a weird internal commitment that gets made. And then without wanting to sound too much like a sort of bombed out hippie, the, the universe sort of conspires to support you in a way that you can't imagine until you've made that first step. And uh, I think you'll find, and I think this is especially true in Ireland, people will be in your corner. When they find out that you have committed, that you've started your business, then they'll want to do you favors. They'll want to introduce you to people. They'll want to come and volunteer and help. It's, it's amazing. You can't legislate it for it before you've done it, but getting started, getting in the game is, for, for me, one of, one of the, the simple and most important things that you can, you can ever do. Innocent came from understanding an audience, and that audience was ourselves. What was missing in our life was with three 26-year-old guys were living and working in London. You know how it is, you go out a lot, you drink too much beer, you eat too much pizza, but there's the other sort of, there's the angel on the other shoulder saying, you've got to do something good for yourself, you've got to be healthy, and we, Innocent came from trying to solve that riddle, trying to make it easy for people to do themselves some good, especially in a sort of a modern urban environment. So I want to sort of get to the end of my rant now, because I know I'm preaching to the, to the converted here, but those sort of things of, you know, focus on solving a problem, make sure you do it better than the competition, have a sense of purpose, be prepared to start and start small, don't be afraid of failure, because there's going to be massive learnings in it and make sure you're doing what you can to surround yourself with this brilliant, committed group of people. They're, they're the things that lie behind the success that Innocent's had. I think they're the things that are gonna rocket fuel any business. I think a lot of the time, the, the dynamic's different, that everyone's, there's somebody secretly wanted to take power. What, in our case, it was everyone's sort of quite secretly trying to avoid the taking of power. When we got to a certain size, um, there was about 100 people in the business and we were going away in a sort of company event. And so we said, oh, you should really fly in separate planes in case the plane goes down and there's no one left in the business. <laughs> and we sort of thought to ourselves, we realized nobody wanted to be on the plane that didn't go down. Yeah. Nobody wanted to be left having to run the business by themselves. So we all thought, right, we're all going to travel in the same car and we're going to travel on the same plane. So. <laughs> Um, so the branding, um, it took us so long, it's, I always say it took us nine months and three seconds to come up with it. Because um, when you know, you know, but God, it was hard. Um, we went through so many different names. When we did that yes and no bin test, we were called Fast Tractor. That was our original name. It was all about, we drive the tractors really fast to get the fruit from the field to the bottle. And uh, the actual packaging had on the front of it a picture of a, uh, a photograph of, 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 a, of a tractor 
like going, sort of jumping over this massive ramp in, in sort of bright green colours. So it looked like high performance diesel fuel. I mean, it was it was it was terrible. It was terrible. So we sort of we went back to back to basics, and we were called hungry aphid for a while. For a split second, we were going to be called monkey vomit, which is a really terrible name. <laughs> then we came. It was crazy. Idea. We wouldn't have a name at all. We'd just be called no name. It was candid and a few of those, and we had innocent, and we nearly ruled it out because we thought it sounded too much like an aromatherapy product. But then we sort of decided that we did like it after all, and then and then stuck with that. Um, and then once we got to the word, then we said to the designer that we're working with, well, we just need a face with a halo. And we were sat outside a pub in Shoreditch in London, and he just drew it on the back of a napkin with a big sort of black felt tip and said, "What do you mean like this?" And we went, "Yeah, exactly like that." So we, the, that thing that he drew, we scanned it, and that went on the front of the the first thing. Oh, one of the funniest things we've done is we write, write in the ingredients panel stupid jokes and it, one of them said um, in the strawberry banana label it said six strawberries, two oranges, half banana and, and two plump nuns. <laughs> it didn't even mean anything. It's a bad joke. You know, but we just wrote it, printed it, forgot about it and then about ten days later we got a call from our local trading standards office and a woman called Denise, I can't remember her surname, but Denise said, you know, she was, um, they'd had this complaint about this reference to plump nuns and our fruit juice. And I said, oh, I'm terribly sorry. It's just, you know, it's our stupid sense of humor, but no one's going to take it seriously. And she said, well, we do. We're launching a formal investigation. And it was my favorite letter I've ever had in business. It said, dear Mr. Reed, you must either take off the reference to plump nuns or start putting them in your fruit juice. <laughs>